Bukhari volume 4, book 54, number 516. Let me read this. Narrating Abu Hurairah, the Prophet said, if any one of you, and I read that part, right? Water in Indian was blown up. Why? Because Satan has stayed in the upper part of his nose all night. You see why they put water in and out of their nose? To flush Satan out. So I have some serious questions to Osama. I don't want to offend him, but here's my question. Is Satan everybody's nose? Because it says all Muslims must do this. So every Muslim has to flush water in and out of his nose, which assumes Satan is everyone's, in everyone's nose. If so, does that mean Satan is omnipresent? If he's omnipresent, wouldn't that make him God? But if he's God, how could something like water flush him out? I thought God is all-powerful. And related to that, if Satan is not a physical being, how can water flush out Satan? Right? And more, moreover, is Satan really that small, or can he then shrink in size and multiply himself to be in multiple noses at the same time? So these are questions I want him to answer because these are the teachings of his prophet. And another question, which part of the nostril does he stay in, the right or the left one? Seriously, if you believe this, then you're going to have to explain this. Now he's going to say, oh no, you're reading too much into this, it doesn't mean that. Well here, let me read to you what Dr. Muhammad Muskin Khan Dr. Muhammad Muslim Khan, these names are hard to say, wow, says about this particular hadith. This is the translator of Bukhari. Look what he says. He says, We should believe that Satan actually stays in the upper part of one's nose, though we cannot perceive how. For this is related to the unseen world of which we know nothing except what Allah tells us through his messenger. So, as far as a Sunni Muslim is concerned, you should believe this. If you call into question, that means you know more than Allah and His Messenger. Well, if you know more than Allah and His Messenger, then why are you a Muslim? Give up Islam sooner than later. Other narrations, by the way. Assalamualaikum and hello to my non-Muslim viewers. I'm going to make this video as quick, as short as possible, so here we go. Uh, the uh, the reason why I'm making this video is to explain the hadith that Sam Shimon just um, quoted. Now, uh, I've noticed that Sam Shimon just has a very literal, a very liberal approach to hadith. He'll just pick hadith out there, throw it out there, and, uh, you know, spin his own interpretation without reading any kind of hadith commentaries and stuff like that. Uh, that hadith in particular, according to Ibn Hajar's commentary on Sahih Bukhari, uh, that hadith is you is supposed to be metaphorical, uh, metaphorical and not literal. So what Ibn Hajar says in his commentary is that that hadith means that people should take water and blow their nose to avoid you know evil thoughts coming into their head because in the Arabic in the Semitic languages not just Arabic but Semitic languages like Hebrew uh, Aramaic the language Jesus spoke uh, you know Hebrew Aramaic uh, uh, Arabic uh, Assyrian Babylonian these would all be Semitic languages anyways in Semitic languages there's something called metaphor where you know where terms like Satan are used but they they don't literally mean Satan. Uh, they they're they're just used in a metaphorical way. So here, Satan is something bad. So Muslims, so should people should blow their nose out to get the bad out of them, the bad thoughts or evil thoughts out of them. It doesn't mean, according to the Hadith commentator Ibn Hajar, it doesn't mean Satan's literally in your nose. It's just a metaphorical explanation of. Uh, metaphorical explanation to get evil thoughts out of your nose, and uh, well, and some people will say, well, Sam Shimon quoted uh, Moshe Khan uh, or the the commentator on site the the translator of Sai Bukhari, which is Mushan Khan or whatever he said, uh, whatever name he said, um, we'll just call him Khan because I missed the first name. But anyways, he says, uh, Dr. Khan mentions that literally Satan's in your nose. Well, a Khan, uh, there are two, two, um, the two ways of explaining why Khan said this. Khan could be referring, Khan could be a, um, a Salafi literalist where he believes everything is, he, he could follow the Zahri school of thought. The Zari school of thought is a Salafi uh, uh, school of thought that that says that uh, you know everything in the Hadith and Sunnah are literal. So they, they went to the extreme and said that everything in the Hadith and the Quran is lit. You can you have to take it literally. Uh, and this is the incorrect um, 
understanding, uh, you know, because of other Muslim scholars like Imam Nawawi, Ibn Hajar, Ibn Bato, uh, etc., etc., don't take there. There were Muslim scholars, and Prophet Muhammad said, "Follow Muslim scholars." They didn't. They didn't go to the extreme in taking things literally. So the Zari school of thought, or that's or that specific Salafi school of thought is probably too extreme and that's probably the sect uh, Khan was following but that's not what you know Ibn Hajar says in his commentary and other commentators like uh, Ibn Hajar, Ibn Bato, Imam No, we also agree that it's metaphorical it's not literal you don't take that literally so all these hadith uh, and Ibn Bato even says in his commentaries and his commentaries on Sai Bukhar and Sai Muslim and stuff like that that in Ibn Hajar say that you know all these activities of Satan uh, you know um, urinating and like there's a hadith where the problem was that Satan urinates in years uh, you know Satan has bowel movements Satan stays in noses these are metaphorical these aren't literal like you don't take it literally the prophet was saying Satan as in bad uh, Satan means something bad or evil and stuff like that so that's why the prophet moment used Satan because you know or use the word Satan and stuff it doesn't mean Satan's literally like staying in people's nose and urinating in people's ears and has bowel movements it, it just means like evil it means bad evil uh you know so uh, it, it, you don't you don't take that literally there's you know uh, according to you know not just mo not just modern islamic scholars but you know classical islamic scholars uh, like ibn hajar ibn bato imam Nawawi, like i said took these things metaphorically and not literally you don't take everything in the hadith literally uh you know there are various interpretations just like there's various interpretations to um quranic verses or biblical verses there are various interpretations of hadith too you know you don't have we Muslims don't have to take uh, you know all of it literally according to hadith commentators like Ibn Hajar and Imam Nawawi they they had metaphorical um, explanations for those hadith and the proper moment said follow scholars who came after him so we Muslims can't follow people like Ibn Hajar, Imam Nawawi, etc., etc. So that's basically um, all I wanted to say about that hadith. Uh, you know, as usual. Uh, you know, critics of Islam take things too literally and they're hypocritical when doing that because any Muslim can go to the book of Revelations or any kind of, you know, or can take things out of the Bible and throw it out there and say this is ridiculous and, and stuff like that. So um, Christian Christian critics of Islam automatically become anti-super, anti-supernatural naturalist or they become like atheists when they read Islamic texts or hadith and stuff like that saying you know it's ridiculous that saying stays in people's noses and stuff like that when in, rea when in reality their Bible also has stuff like the book of Revelation says you know they're dragons and you know uh, they're dragons and Satan causes epilepsy and stuff like that and medically we know we know Satan doesn't cause uh, epilepsy and, but that it's in there in the New Testament and you know other biblical verses which you know and uh, anti-supernaturalist or an atheist or a liberal or whatever would would say well that's ridiculous you know scientifically you know Moses couldn't have split the sea or you know they're talking donkeys in the Old Testament and the New Testament uh, you know has fantastic stories of um, you know people rising from the dead and marching in Jerusalem like the Matthew like Matthew 28 like the ending of the Gospel of Matthew says after the supposed resurrection of Jesus so you know the new the the Bible not just the New Testament, not just the Old, but the entire Bible is filled with these fantastic supernatural events. So for Christians to just point the finger at Islam and say these things are too supernatural or a rational person can't believe it. Well, the Bible also has, you know, fantastic supernatural things in it too. It's not just Islam. So um, in a world where God exists and where world where supernatural exists, these things are possible. Uh, you know, only uh, uh, atheists or a liberal or anti-supernaturals will say no, th those things are impossible. So for Christians to, you know, criticize Islam for having these supernatural tales or saying saying th same things like saying uh, states in people's noses and stuff like that is kind of hypocritical because according to their own Bible supernatural things do, do have fantastic things do happen and stuff like that so of course no one can you know disprove even if even if those traditions are literal and I'm not saying they are but even those hadith uh, traditions are literal no one can disprove it I mean, no one can disprove that same you know we don't we can't see Satan. we can't see the supernatural realm so we don't know how Satan operates maybe maybe Satan, you know 
like Sam Shamoon said, he can, you know, shrink himself and multiply himself and go and be like, like there's no, there's, there's no way to prove or disprove it. I mean, you know, there's no way to disprove it. Maybe, maybe Satan, maybe the prophet Mormon was referring to Satan as bacteria. Maybe that, maybe that's, maybe the prophet Mormon used Satan because the Arabs didn't know about bacteria back then and they only knew like metaphorical, like, uh, they knew supernatural beings like Satan, so that's why the prophet said it instead of bacteria. Maybe that's it. You know, who knows what that, who knows what the correct interpretation of that, uh, you, who knows what the, you know, what the literal interpretation of that hadith is. Uh, we can, we can all, all, according to classical Muslim scholars, like Ibn Hajar and Ibn Nawi and Ibn Batul, these are metaphorical, these aren't literal. So you don't, you don't have to take everything literally in, um, in the hadith and the prophet moment peace be upon him also said that i'm a i'm a, I'm a human being uh there's a there's a hadith in sight muslim where the prophet moment said i'm a human being you know if i say things out of my if i just say things out of my own opinion take it as my opinion but if i if i talk to you about religion then trust me because i'm getting revelations from God or Allah. So it seems like, you know, this isn't a revelation from Allah. This is just Prophet Muhammad. Because Prophet Muhammad never said Allah revealed that Satan stays. No, he didn't say that. So it seems like this is just Prophet Muhammad's interpretations or opinion. And it doesn't, it doesn't reflect divine. It doesn't, it doesn't have, it's not a divine saying of Allah. So we can just take this as the Prophet Muhammad's statement just to explain, you know, just to get Muslims to wipe their nose using metaphorical language like Satan and stuff like that. Maybe he meant bacteria or maybe he meant it metaphorically so Muslims wash their nose to get rid of evil or, you know, um, they uh, get up for the uh, Fajr prayer or the, the morning prayer um, because if they miss morning prayer, metaphorically, not literally, Satan urinates in the ear as in Satan has humiliated and defeated you by... Um, by tricking you into not praying to God. So, you know, but it's metaphorical, it's not literal. You don't take that literally. Like the English language has metaphors like cat got your tongue. It doesn't mean, you know, a cat literally has your tongue. It's just a metaphor. Um, you don't take it literally. Well, same thing with Hadith. Not everything in the Hadith is to be taken literal. There are metaphorical interpretations of the Hadith. So that's all I wanted to say about that. And um, soon I'll have other videos refuting uh, Sam Shimon's comments. Uh, by the way, that video was taken from Sam Shimon's debate with Osama Abdullah. Now, Osama Abdullah did very badly in that debate. He lost that debate, but, you know, I, I don't blame him because that, that topic's too big anyways. They were debating his moment of prophet of God, a very broad, a very big topic that can't be debated because it's just, there are too many subtopics related to that topic. So I watched that whole debate, Sam Sh I mean, Sam Shimon won that debate. Uh, as a Muslim, I don't have any problems admitting that, but that doesn't mean Sam Shimon is right. Uh, so I'll be making more videos refuting a lot of his stuff, because a lot of his stuff, they're very easy answers to um, refute. But they're very easy answers to hit a lot of what he brought up in that debate, so I'm going to be doing a series of videos refuting him in the future inshallah so this is the first video so hope everybody understands the meaning of that hadith thanks so long